Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name's Jeff Ferris. Welcome to the Woodpecker's Model Shop. It's good to be back. This is the first new deep dive we've shot in several weeks, and uh, it's good to be uh, back in the studio. Uh, today, we are gonna take a closer look at Woodpecker's Iron Grip Small Parts Holder. We're gonna answer some questions that we've had on social media. I'm gonna show you some of the best practices to use with this system. Okay, let's get started. So this is a clip from the product video when I was uh, demonstrating the iron grip. And uh, you'll notice that as I'm changing the workpiece uh, to a different side, the router is still running. Uh, several customers took exception with that, uh, including uh, the president of the company. And uh, even when I watch it, it does look like I'm closer to that router bit than I should be. So we want to make sure anytime we're making a change to our setup, we're doing that with the router table turned off and spun completely down. Um, now that sounds really good. It just is a little impractical. Not very many of us have enough patience. If you do, that, that's great. If you can turn the router off, let it spin down every time before you reach onto the table to make adjustments, more power to you. I don't have that kind of patience. So I wanna show you what I do in my home shop when I'm not trying to stay on video. Now, while I'm getting ready to make this cut, uh, we're gonna cover some other things that people brought up. Uh, one of them was a big number of people were concerned about running into the router bit with their tool. And of course, the answer to that is to leave enough material on the outside of it that that's gonna take care of it. Uh, but then the question comes up, well, how do you keep that consistent? Uh, and the first time that I used the tool, I struggled with that a little bit. Uh, and then I read the owner's manual. And it said to take these two pieces right here and put them in just like that. Now, when I put that in there, and push it back against that stop, I'm gonna get the same distance every single time. And we can see very clearly that that's plenty of distance to keep me away from the bit. And we're ready to cut. This is the part right now that I was telling you I don't have the patience for. I don't want to wait for that router bit to run completely down before I reach onto the table and make an adjustment. We're going to step away from it and make the adjustment somewhere else. So instead of working on the router table, I've stepped over two steps away to my table saw. And now with the table saw off, I don't have to worry a bit about taking that out, turn it around, putting it back in, clamping it back up. No safety issues whatsoever. Now I'm ready for my next cut on the router table. Now that technique works great when your piece is within the five inch range of the iron grip, or five and a half, uh, maybe six, something like that. In that range, it's all great. But when you've got a longer piece, how are we gonna take care of keeping that extension consistent? Well, I came up with an idea and it works really good. Let me show you. On our longer piece, what we're gonna do is 
take out one of the indexing pins. Now let's take a look at how we can do this repeatedly if we're going to do several of these pieces. I'm going to bring my table saw rip fits up and lock it. We're going to take our backup piece, put it against the stop, and put that against the fence. Now we'll take our work piece, slide it in, get it close, bring the clamp up, make sure that everybody is flush against the fence, and lock it up. Now we're going to have exactly the same depth protrusion for every one of the pieces that we do. And we're ready to go to the router table. Now our piece of scrap stock did two jobs for us. It helped keep that protrusion exactly the same for all of the pieces that we're going to do. But it also supported the back side of the cut so we can't get any blow out or tear out as the, as the cutter exits the back side. So we got a nice clean exit, and when we get ready to do the second end, it's so simple. All we do is keep that against our stop in the iron grip, align the two pieces to the table saw fence, and make sure as we clamp it up, everything stays square. And we're ready for our second cut. So what we're going to do now is make another board almost identical to this one, but with a different style of bit. When we made this first one, we used a rabbiting bit with a bearing on it. Now I've switched the bit to a solid carbide spiral bit that's just a straight cutter. Now in this cut, in the first one, the bearing is doing all the work. The bearing is controlling the depth of cut. Now the router table fence is going to control, control the depth of cut. And we're going to do that in conjunction with a fence on the iron grip. I've added our plastic fence on here. I'm going to show you how to set that up. The first thing we need to do is take our stop pins and move them into the first position on the inside of the jaws. Now we're going to open the jaws up, take our long edge, and put that against the two stop pins. Make sure they're against the stops and put a little pressure on the clamp. Now we're going to push that up against the fence, double check and make sure that that gives us plenty of clearance between the router bit and our iron grip, and it does. Now we're going to take the plastic fence and push that up against the router table fence. When the iron grip fence is against the router table fence and the work piece is also against the fence, everything is right where we need it to be for all four cuts. So to set this up, we just put the fence against the router table fence, put the end of the work piece against the fence, Bring the vice jaw down, make sure everything is flush, and lock it up. And now we're ready for our cut. And all we're doing is turning the board around. come up against the fence, make sure the iron grip fence is in line with the router table fence, and lock it up. 
and we're ready for our second cut. Now we're ready for those stop pins again for our two long cuts. We're gonna thread those in. Same routine as before, bring everything up against the fence, make sure it's all flush, clamp it up, and we're ready to cut. Turn the board around. Everybody's against the fence and happy. And we have four perfect rabbits, just like these four perfect rabbits. So which one is the right one? Well, there is no right or wrong. Here's the difference though. With the rabbit, the only downside to this is the bearing is setting the depth of cut and there's no in between. You can't have a little more or a little less. It's exactly what that distance is, no matter what. With the router fence and a straight bit, you can tweak that a little one way or the other. Make the rabbit a few thousands bigger or a few thousands smaller just by adjusting the position of the fence. Not possible when you're running off a bearing. Now, the other good thing about the bearing though is let's say this piece of stock had a little bit of a warp to it like this. Well, with the fence, you're not gonna be able to follow that. Your, your rabbit is gonna vary in width from end to end. But with the bearing, it's gonna follow that contour and your rabbit is gonna be exactly the same all the way across. So it's just, uh, I believe the English call it horses for courses. Find the one that's gonna do the job best for your, the particular job that you're doing at that point. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching this episode of Woodpecker's Deep Dive on the Iron Grip Small Parts Holder. If you enjoyed it today, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know about every one of our great videos right when they come out. Again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Woodpecker's Deep Dive.